But the part of filmmaking that I enjoy the most is finding the locations, just the right locations. Uh, there were two interesting stories in this film. Four months before we started shooting, we gave the script to the Dominican <coughs> priest in Salamanca and asked permission to shoot inside their church. We were granted permission. Two weeks before we were actually supposed to be at that location, they took away the permission to shoot inside, and we were, we were scrambling. We, we, we were wondering why they gave us permission in the first place. Was, those were the people that brought you the Inquisition. And so we realized someone finally higher up read the screenplay and said, are you crazy allowing them to shoot inside our monastery? And we ended up at the, uh, an abandoned in, uh, cathedral outside of Saragossa. That was uh, the opening scene in the movie where they're seated around the table. And when he rides in on his horse and, and shoots the priest who's singing. So we actually ended up with a better location where they come out of the door where the painting is burning. That is right outside a Dominican monastery, and they could not stop us from shooting there because that's actually public place. They allowed us to open the doors and come out, but they wouldn't allow us to shoot inside. Where the king was playing the violin was actually Franco's office when he was the leader of Spain. The furniture was exactly the same as when Franco was living there and, and died there. Uh, when we got permission to use that palace, the curator of the palace also had to give us permission what furniture we could use. She was there when we rehearsed months before we shot the scene. She had no problems with us sitting in any of the chairs, moving chairs. The day we were shooting it, a bureaucrat from the government was there, Minister of the Interior, and he told Milos that um, Stellan Skarsgård could not sit down in those chairs. We could not move any of the chairs. Milos got in a very heated discussion with him, yelling at him he was worse than the communist commissars in Prague. <laughs> and, and this man, you could tell, still wished Franco was in power. So ever going back and forth, and the curator came over to me and, and whispered in my ear, do you think I should tell the minister that this is the room where the cleaning staff at night eats their meals and smokes their cigarettes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am always on location at least four or five months before we start shooting. Um, it depends on what country you are about the co-productions. Uh, in when you're shooting in Europe, there's a number of points. There's 21 points, and you have to hit, I think, 15 of them to qualify as a European production. Uh, I mean, we were lucky that Milo still had his Czech passport um, and was very willing to work with the Spanish crew. Um, I think the only, it was, well, Natalie Portman was not European. Our production designer, Patricia von Brandenstein. Uh, I think those were the only points we lost. We actually did all our editing, our post-production sound work in Paris to qualify. But the rules vary per country. Goya's paintings are in the public domain, however, if you want to use them and reproduce them, then you have to have the museum take a great photograph for you, and that photograph is not in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when we thank the museums, it's, it's for those photos, thank and paid. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the person who did the paintings of Inez and Lorenzo was actually the Goya copyist from the Prado Museum, because they do make copies. And he was the person that did it. And I th think it was the critic for New York Magazine, which, which hated the copies. And it was 
actually the Prado expert who did, who did that. I, I think that the best training I had for producing uh, was my parents owned a small restaurant. And I used to go to the full, my father was a strong believer in child labor. <laughs> and when I, was, when I was 10 years old, he started taking me to the Fulton Fish Market at 3.30 in the morning, a few days a week. And there I saw negotiating between him and the sellers of the fish. And it may have only been over a few cents a pound, but that few cents meant something to my father and it meant something to the fishermen. I also ended up man sort of managing the restaurant. So I was in charge of you know, the food, what you needed from the produce market, the reservations, the staffing. I think that was the training for me for producing. And actually, you know, dealing with people face to face. Yeah. Best part is working with creative, talented, intelligent people every day. And working with people who have a passion for making film, no matter what the position is, when you get people on a crew with passion, I mean, that's what keeps you going when you when you've been working 20 hours and your alarm clock's going off at four in the morning to get up for another day. It's the passion of the people you work with. So let's thank Paul for his passion.